you know it would honestly make the game easier to code anyways that way you don't have to do the triple hit just make the big explosion bigger okay here's another thing her damage is overall underwhelming and the reason why that is is because electro is a bad element oh shit here we go again a lot of people like to tell me that Yoimiya and Tartalia are the two worst five stars in the game. Explain to me how Ayato, Ayaka, Raiden Shogun, Bennett would be a bad team. You said Tartalia is good at what he does. What does Tartalia do that that is good? Real quick chat, as a lot of y'all know, back in the day, I was known as the Tartalia guy. Hello there, Flip here and today, yeah there's no point in even stalling, this video we're going to be doing a Genshin Core on one of the biggest Genshin content creators, Tectone, and hopefully if my timing isn't dog shit, this should be up before 2.7, as that will most likely be when Tectone goes back to Genshin for a while, to make more takes, so before that happens, I need to explain why he's not reliable, and for those of you who don't know what the Genshin Core is, what it entails, the TLDR of it, is that we will be trying certain Genshin content creators on their takes on certain characters of the game in general, and be giving them a fitting sentence for said takes. You can go watch my other videos on it if you want more information. And as always, standard YouTube practices, if at any point during the video you are entertained, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing, as my M-Tash Genshin Court is in the works and you don't want to miss that. So, Tectone. I recently did a community poll on who you guys would rather see, and Tectone won of course, but by quite a lot, and funnily enough, Tectone was kind of the groundwork for these type of videos, as I think my most popular video was me talking about why he was wrong in Yoimiya's viability as a character. Looking at Tectone now, he is of course a whale content creator already creating a disconnect between most players and him, as well as the fact that he seems to be anti-theorycrafting and anti-meta, due to some things that happened in the past which you can do your own research on. Now that wouldn't honestly be a problem in isolation, but when you consider the fact that Tekton has started a street robunculous amount of misconception in the Genshin community because he doesn't preface or state that things are his opinion, coupled with the fact that he actively shits on meta and TC, that breeds a problem which we'll look at in the first piece of evidence. hate watching 10 tons videos oh fuck i hate this channel he just sucks the fun out of genshin impact for me but i guess i'll watch it jesus christ uh, he always drama baits uh, he always drama baits drama baits drama baits <laughs> There's no way that just came from your mouth of all people. And also, Tenten doesn't really drama bait. He's more on the line of doom posting a unit so that they don't get overhyped, and people expect too much from that character, which is a good thing. With Ayato's 80 elemental cost burst and the fact that you cannot generate any hydro energy off you, he's gonna have an insane amount of energy issues. You Unless you use him as a main character, kind of like Yarmia. All of these issues don't exist if you're using him as a main DPS. I mean, no, that's not how that works. Let's look at Eula. Even with her being on field most of the time, she still needs quite a bit of ER and a high invested cryo battery with sacrificial of Favonius to burst off cooldown. Aito is a character who wants to burst off cooldown because a buffs man contributes to his total damage output. Running him as a main DPS doesn't just erase this issue, he would still need a bare minimum of 130 energy recharge. Why the fuck would running him on field change this? Explain to me how Ayato, Ayaka, Raiden Shogun, Bennett would be a bad team. <laughs> I didn't expect my ears to be a victim of third degree murder, but here we are. I just love how you can tell that Tecton used every single brain cell he had to devise this fuck festival of a team. Whales are actually a different breed. He heard the word ER issues and immediately thought of Raiden, who isn't alone capable of solving Ayato's ER problems without another battery like a Vivonius character. And not only that, but he also wanted to run a freeze comp and he defaults to Aiko who also has ER issues and then for some reason he just decides to throw Bennett in there when Kazuha would probably be a better pick. 
but you asked for it, so Techie, let me explain why this team is dog shit. First, what is the purpose of this team? If it's a freeze team, remove Raiden and Bennett as they are capable of messing up the freeze reaction. And since I can knock back enemies with their burst and you don't have any form of grouping, this means you'll be battling your stamina bar half the time. And then all the characters have to take time in Bennett's circle, meaning that you have to decide which character gets buffed and the rest of the team will be dealing damage without Bennett's buff. Also, what the fuck would the rotation be on this team? Aika is so awkward here. Also, is this team for mobbing, single target, or AoE? There was no purpose behind it. The better thing to do is replace Ayaka with Kazaha for a dual carry Raiden and Ayato team, or replace Raiden and Bennett with better free supports and then you have a stronger freeze team. Hopefully that explanation helped. Uh, anyways, that pretty much wraps up this piece of evidence. The person people trust to give any semblance of a meta take doesn't even know what quadratic scaling is. Might look forward to the entire Ayato quadratic scaling thing because Ganyu Elemental Burst- What went are you even saying, dude? What quadratic scaling? Jesus Christ! Good lord! Fucking this nerd shit! And you pair her with fancy half quadratic scaling, which has proven. Tectone has a clear will perspective and can pretty much shit out any team recommendation and use it because he just does that much more damage than the average player and then his chat sees it and then are going to start reciprocating his team recommendations which is how misconception spread. Funnily enough, Tectone and I went to lose the problems are similar as they both give out things from their whale point of view and their viewers don't seem to understand the difference in how their malnourished level 80 40 crit rate Aito isn't going to hit a fraction of the damage that Tectone will. Again, the person that doesn't know how important energy recharge is shouldn't be giving team advice. It's like asking someone who doesn't know how to pass a basketball to give advice on team strategy. I, from what I've witnessed so far, I'll be adding 4 years for a clear whale bias and for a repeated offense of slander against the Zhang Ling salesman. Additionally, as punishment you will now have to go back to math class to know the difference between linear, quadratic and semi-quadratic scaling. Now let's move on to the next piece of evidence. You haven't done the dog and you need a weapon from the free to play shit? First tip, you need to farm every single boss until you get your iron thing on Kazuha. <laughs> There's a perfectly good Favonia sword right there. Let's see your stats now. And that is amazing. For Ayaka with the four piece blizzard strayer, that is amazing. Oh, uh, don't lie to him like that. Holy shit! If I go to this Bennett and I see C6, I'm gonna reach through my goddamn monitor and I'm gonna slap the fuck out of you. You better pray to whatever god you believe in that this motherfucker is not C6. Good. And here we go. One of, if not the biggest misconception in the game that Tekton started, and that is that C6 Bennett is bad, which is just untrue. C6 Bennett messes up two comps. Kitching and physical and if you use kitching you've lost regardless your account is already fucked at that point and for physical comps in which the only one that is viable is eula you are better off not running bennett with her as they have anti-synergy and then for every other character in the game they are skill and burst characters who don't auto attack regardless or they have an infusion like Aito, Ito, and Raiden, meaning they lose nothing. C6 Bennett is a 15% damage boost to all pyro characters who you will most likely be using with Bennett regardless, like Zhang Ling for example. It can also enable some team comps and more reactions since you are applying a higher rate of pyro. There are close to no downsides of C6ing your Bennett. And Mahoyo still has not yet added a character that is heavily affected by C6 Bennett. It's a direct upgrade. And even then, Mahoyo is giving out exclusive supports to characters that offset the need to run Bennett sometimes. I hate how so many people are scared to C6 their Bennett when there are more positives to downsides. It's not bad. I will lose all my shit if I keep hearing this. Here, we'll do, we'll do Raiden. We'll, fuck it, we'll use a fucking Kakomi. Because you have that belt for some reason. And then you can go like what? You want to go like a fish? Behold, I think both title. of these teams are fine. Hey, yo, actually a good team and using Raiden and Fischl together. Then you also have that fucking Ayaka, man. Like you also have the Ayaka. So like, then let's, then let's do this. I bet this team fucking slaps. I don't want to do this anymore, man. Puto. You have 9% crit rate on your Venti. 111% crit damage. All right, calm the fuck down. Venti doesn't care about crit stats. But you, you actually don't. Dude, that's what I'm saying, dude. I told you. You literally don't need artifacts on Venti. Uh, 
Excuse me? You need to relax with the clowning. Venti fulfills his main role of being able to suck up enemies with no artifacts, that is true. But saying you don't need artifacts on Venti at all is disingenuous. Because there happens to be one of the most broken artifact sets that Venti can use, which is Verdescent, which provides so much value to the team as well as the fact that you will get more comfortable clears with high EM on your Venti. He can do his job without artifacts, but the massive fucking boost you get from building him is still worth it. So you love Kazuha so much that you decided to just not run any EM on him? I have him C2. So you love Kazuha so much that you decided to just not run any EM on him? I, and now here we just have the general problem with account reviews in general and why I think that if you aren't going to do it right then you just shouldn't. Yes, Triple EM on Kazaha is his best build, but the problem is that it's clearly not what he wants out of his Kazaha. The person here for some reason wants to waste their misblur and run DPS Kazaha, but that is what he wants to do. Someone else cannot evaluate how good your account is when they don't even know what you want out of your account, and Texon just doesn't have the knowledge to be able to recommend the right build accordingly. And also, Texon tries to at least give out his idea of the most optimal build when doing account reviews, despite the fact that he just doesn't know what the optimal builds to go for are. And now, that will be it for this piece of evidence here. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Since the C6 Bennett is bad take has been so widespread and you are the main proprietor- pr 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 Proprietor of it, I'll be adding 5 years for that and another year for the negligent advice in your account reviews. And now the last piece of evidence we'll be looking at is a short segment from Tectone's stream where- We'll see. I don't think it's Hutao. I think Hutao is very good. But I don't think Hutao is as good as Ayaka or Kazuha. Or Ganyu. Or Zhangling. Zhongli's good. That's pretty much all I can say. Okay, no, you're right. Ayaka, Kazuha, Zhongli. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. What the fuck? Wait, I agree. That's a good take. Thank thanks for keeping me alive. Hell no, don't thank your chat for that shit, but I can't fault them because this is also something else that you started, and now everyone in your chat is going to reciprocate this even though it's not right. Because people agree with their favourite content creators even if there's a burden of evidence. Who would have thought? Saying Zhongli is a top 3 character is a horrible take, I don't even think he's a top 10 5 star character. And whale content creators, and especially Tekton who had a whole controversy over it, are one of the reasons why Zhongli is so overrated by the general community. Zhongli only helps people who have their accounts and damage at endgame level because the only meta thing Zhongli allows you to do is play comfortably, since he doesn't offer much to boost your damage besides a few exceptions. There are so many other characters, even 4 stars, that will give you a bigger damage boost to your team than Zhongli does, as well as the fact that building Zhongli as a burst DPS in the majority of cases, going to be a DPS loss as he really must be the grandpa of Genshin Impact with how painfully fucking slow his ultimate animation is. So his best case use is to be a shield bot and even then, unless you are a complete dog shit at the game, there are very, very few cases where running a shield butt is necessary, especially when your damage is low. Can we please stop hyping up Zhongli? He's the most solid B tier character in the game. And yes, I did tell you guys this piece of evidence is going to be short because <laughs> it is. And I'll be adding 3 years for starting the Zhongli misconception because in Tectone's defense, it wasn't solely him who perpetuated it, but he still pushed it enough to warrant this, so yes. Tectone is found guilty and for his offenses against the meta and theorycrafting communities, as well as spreading misinformation to the casual player base, in total Tectone will be sentenced to 12 years in prison, one of which will be spent learning linear and quadratic graphs. Court is now closed. <sighs> That'll be all for the Tekton Genshin Court. Tekton, at least compared to the other channels I've covered, doesn't purely make commentaries on Genshin's meta. And he also seems to not talk about it as much, but that could all be due to the lack of content. I just find it ironic how Tekton calls people who actually know about theorycrafting Doom posters when he is literally one of the biggest offenders of Doom posting. The funniest jokes actually just write themselves. I at least hope that more casuals don't look to Tekton for advice and try to learn how to build their accounts themselves, instead of relying on male content creators like Tekton, who aren't that knowledgeable. And I also hope that they just stop sheeping his takes without thinking about it, as that just breeds and spreads misinformation. And on that note, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on Tekton, as I'd love to hear and I respond to almost every single comment. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys... On the flip side, peace.